Hey everyone, Hakilis here, and you may have noticed the intro to my channel says Tokusatsu Games Comics. As of yet, I've focused on the Tokusatsu portion, but today, that all changes, because today, we are talking about Marvel's Avengers. Specifically, the PS4 beta that just took place this past weekend. So hop in the Quinjet and buckle up, because A-Day is coming. But the big question on everyone's mind is, should you even care? Developed by Crystal Dynamics and published by Square Enix, Marvel's Avengers is a third-person action-adventure game that puts you in control of your favorite heroes. Team up with friends and their unique customized roster in online war tables to collect loot and level up your team to be the world's mightiest heroes. Avengers officially comes to consoles and PC on September 4th, but last week, they ran a beta for anyone that pre-ordered the game on PlayStation 4, with two more betas coming in the following weeks. I took an absolute deep dive into to the beta with what I would call a rough yet comfortable experience. Let's start with the pros because for all of Avengers faults, it's got so many upsides. The biggest compliment I can give is that this game knows its identity. When the first trailer was revealed at E3, a lot of criticism came from the fact that these characters almost look like an MCU bootleg. In the short parts of the story that I've played, I feel confident in saying that that is not the case and that these characters set themselves apart very, very well. A distinct factor in this is the addition of Kamala Khan. She serves as our sort of gateway into the universe, and the team at Crystal Dynamics has made sure to put a lot of care into her portrayal. Kamala is the fangirl that all of us are. There's a scene where she's looking through a storage room full of Avengers memorabilia that is very reminiscent of a lot of scenes of Ellie's wonder in the original Last of Us. Looking sharp, guys. Besides Kamala, Bruce Banner gets the most character spotlight of the beta's roster. He's essentially the reason the team was disbanded in the first place, and you can tell he still harbors a lot of regret for that. Iron Man and Black Widow are kind of thrown on your roster during the beta, so a lot of their characterization comes in the form of one-liners during battle. It's not a lot, but it's enough to differentiate the characters from their on-screen counterparts, with Tony Stark specifically sort of reminding me of his portrayal in the Earth's Mightiest Heroes cartoon. Gotta get something off my chest! <laughs> get it? off his chest. Another point in the pro section comes in the form of loot and skill trees. The first time I used each character, they felt severely underpowered. Iron Man should be absolutely stomping these henchmen, and I just kept getting straight up rocked until I started upgrading his skill tree and gear. Then I started to see what kind of versatile fighter Iron Man could be. Every character has their own unique skill tree and set of gear. One of my favorite parts of playing was using Black Widow and unlocking her different gun abilities and realizing which one worked better with different enemies. Now you may be saying, ugh, a basic RPG skill tree? That's not a big deal. But the last point in the pro column is that this game is fun for Avengers fans. Crushing the Abomination or fighting some giant spider mech was a blast, and I was actively replaying missions to get better loot as they scaled. I spent the most time with Miss Marvel and Black Widow as they felt the best. There was something about the flow of their hits that just made combos feel second nature. I actually have a hunch that Widow specifically plays really close to how Spider-Man will. She can zip around with her grappling hooks and chain it between enemies. I mean, she's basically Spider-Man with guns. If Miss Marvel and Black Widow are the shining examples of what this game can be, then it's the men of the Avengers beta that really drag down the experience. The Hulk specifically feels like a really clunky mess to control, and I think in his instance, that's where the skill tree really fails. I mean, I understand leveling up and such, but the Hulk should never, and I mean never, be getting worked by these tiny henchmen. It just doesn't make sense, and maybe it's been done to fit him inside this RPG style system, but he just feels way too nerfed. Iron Man, on the other hand, feels like a mission to get used to his flight mechanics, but once it clicks, you can have some fun with it. And easily, the most damning part of this game is the performance. Avengers has some problems that it should not be having this close to launch. The frame rate, specifically. I just want to point out, still on OBS, it says no dropped frames. So everything you're seeing that looks like it's dropping, that's skipping around, lagging around, is from the Avengers. Frame rate is abysmal when there's a lot happening on screen, whether it's too many enemies or activating your heroic while your whole team is on screen. It wouldn't be too bad if it didn't happen often, but Avengers insists on throwing these waves at you consistently. I have to reiterate, games should not look like this, especially a month away from release. And it's not just the frame rate. My PS4 sounded like a jet engine while looking through the marketplace menu. 
the marketplace menu. There are other situations where the game, simply put, just isn't pretty. It's sort of like a cross between user-generated content in Dreams and an MMO that was zoomed all the way in. So, should you pre-order Marvel's Avengers? My honest opinion? No. If you're really into Avengers and cannot wait for this game, then go for it. But I think the true test will be the support from the devs. As it stands, I'm predicting Marvel's Avengers launches to a sea of sixes and sevens. And if the same performance issues are still there at launch and aren't patched out in the first few days, I have a feeling Avengers is gonna turn a lot of people off. If you can wait for reviews of the final product, absolutely go for that. Or even wait for a price drop. Crystal Dynamics has said over and over again that their goal with this game is longevity. Going as far as confirming story DLC content for new characters. So if you can get it in a month for half the price and some issues patched, that would be the best way to do it. But you can judge it for yourself, August 21st through the 23rd when Marvel's Avengers goes into open beta for all platforms. Let me know if you plan to pre-order the Avengers and if the beta has changed your opinion on anything. Or come find me on any social media, I'll leave them right there on the screen. Don't forget to hench in the like button into a blue boy and right or kick that subscribe button and share this link all around because it so, so helps. And I will see you next time.